Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about the granulose cell culture and its applications. This section covers the following topics. Functions of granular cells. Culturing and characterization of granular cells. Cautions, applications, and limitations of granular cell culture. Firstly, let's see the function of granulose cells. Granulose cells which are located around the oocyte, can secrete a variety of biologically active substances, including growth factors and hormones that regulate the growth and the development of the oocyte. Conversely, the factors secreted by the oocyte can regulate the growth, differentiation, and the metabolism of the granulose cells. Therefore, the granulose cells and the oocyte can regulate each other to maintain the normal growth, development, and maturation of the follicle. During follicular development, granular cells undergo dynamic changes, and their proliferation, differentiation, and metabolism are closely related to the stages of follicular development. In order to investigate the mechanism of reproductive endocrine regulation of granular cells, during follicular development, an in vitro culture system of granular cells has been established. Next, we will learn more about the method of granular cell culture in vitro. In vitro culture can be applied to granular cells at different developmental stages. For example, the granular cells of preentrial follicles from PD12 mouse ovaries can be isolated for in vitro culture. More commonly, pregnant horse. Serum gonotropin is administered to three-week-old mice to promote follicle development and granular cell proliferation. Then, granular cells can be released by puncturing mouse ovaries at 24 to 48 hours after PMSG injection. These granular cells can be cultured in vitro after centrifugation and plating. In addition, human granulose cells obtained from oocyte retrieval during assisted reproducting process can also be cultured in vitro. The specific culture conditions and characterization methods are as follows. The culture medium commonly used is DMEM F12 supplemented with 5% Fetoborin serum and 1% penicillin streptomycin and the culture conditions are 5% carbon dioxide and 37 degrees centigrade. In vitro cultured granular cells can be passaged after growth and proliferation. Furthermore, granular cells can be identified by immunofluorescence staining of granular cell markers such as FOXL2 and FSHR. In vitro culture of granular cells increases our understanding of gonotropin regulation studies. In vivo granular cells begin to express gonotropin receptors at certain stages of development. Follicle stimulating hormone receptor FSHR is expressed from the primary follicle and mediates the function of FSH to promote granular cell proliferation, differentiation, and estrogen synthesis. FSH can be added directly to granular cell cultured in vitro, or phosculine, which is an activator of the adelaide cyclase, can be added to mimic the effects of FSH. In addition, as the follicles develop, Granular cells of entrant follicles begin to express luteinizing hormone receptor LHR in response to FSH, mediating the proluteinizing effects of LH. The addition of both phosculine and formal extra to granular cells cultured in vitro can mimic the action of LH peak. A variety of human granular cell lines have been established with different developmental stages and properties that can be used to 
study different biological functions of granular cells. Kidney cells have the characteristics of immature granular cells, express FATHR, and are able to synthesize estrogen, but they are derived from tumor cells. SVOG is the human luteal granular cell line immortalized by transfection with SV40 large T antigen, and it can produce progesterone. The following cautions in granular cell culture require special attention. First, because phenolred, which is commonly used as an acid-base indicator in cell culture medium, has estrogen-like effects. The application of phenolred-free medium is necessary to avoid the effects of phenolred on granular cell sometimes. Second, to reduce the effects of various hormones and the growth factors in the serum on the function of granular cells, charcoal detection stripped fetoborin serum can be used for granular cell culture. The synthesis of estrogen by granular cells requires androgen as the substrate, but granular cells cannot synthesize androgens by themselves. Therefore, when studying estrogen synthesis, in granular cells, uh, testosterone is usually added to the culture medium. Fourth, without the factors derived from oocytes and uh, thicker interstitial cells and the regulation of intraorary microenvironment, granular cells cultured in vitro have a tendency to spontaneously luteinize. Therefore, a uh, long duration is not appropriate for granular cell culture. In vitro culture and the intervention of granular cells at different developmental stages can facilitate the study of proliferation, apoptosis, differentiation, metabolism, and estrogen synthesis of granular cells, which is important for revealing the molecular mechanism of granular cells during follicular development. Finally, let's look at the limitations of granular cell culture. Without the cyclic regulation of gonadotropins and the regulation from oocytes and the thicker interstitial cells, the short duration of in vitro culture could not recapitulate the dynamic physiological changes of granular cells during follicular development. To summarize, in this section, we have learned the methods, applications, and the limitations of erring granular cell culture. You can choose and apply them according to the purpose of your study. Thank you for your attention.